Hello, welcome back to Mr. Bob's Builds. In today's episode, I paint a 176 scale figure from start to finish. You may recall that at the end of the last episode, I left you with this picture. I used this particular figure to work out my process for painting these figures. And it is this process that I'm going to share with you today. And here's that same figure painted. In a departure from my normal way of doing things, today's episode is mainly video. I've been inspired to attempt this method of presentation by watching the Zen-like sit-ins of Guido Hot and the stream of consciousness existential musings of Cohen. If you've not already seen these brilliant modelers at work, I'll provide links in the notes. To get my excuses in first, I have an excellent stills camera with a fixed wide angle lens. While it also does good quality video, it is nigh on impossible to monitor the, the input while working. So at times, while the model is usually apparent, you'll get some excellent close-ups of my hands and my fingers. If it all gets too much, skip to the end where there'll be some photographs of the finished article. So I'm now going to introduce the figure that I'm going to be painting. And it's going to be the walking infantryman in the middle of this photograph. In the final model, he's going to be marching next to the, the chap we saw in the last photograph. The gun crew member with the ammunition strap will also make an appearance. Both these figures are made by WD models and there's a link in the, in the notes. These white metal models have been sp sprayed with black Vallejo primer, followed by Tamiya flat white sprayed from directly above. This two part priming process combined with the application of thin paint gets the definition of highlights and shadows off to a good start. Now, on with the show. So here we go. I've got no way of monitoring what's on the camera. But we'll see what we can do anyway. This is a black acrylic ink. It's a nice brushing consistency, nice and thin. But it's Jet black, black and opaque. A little bit of tissue. Okay. Brush into the ink. Wick it off. And then with a confident stroke, line between the various detail parts. You can do this once the paint's on, but I quite like to do it at this stage, at the very beginning. And then get thin washes of colour on. And it helps to keep the definition there without that black intruding. So all the main details over that buckle there between those pouches there down the crease of the jacket under the pouches the side of his rifle strap and his webbing strap as well. So that starts to make that separate nicely. The side of the rifle strap and that arm crease there. And the crease of the jacket. And these are very small details. And this extra contrast would help them stick out. Between the jacket and that crease under the jacket, and 
I try and be as precise as possible, but if it overlaps a bit, because colour's going on the top, we can disguise that to a certain degree. I think that's his bayonet case. We're going to come up the side of that. And there. And already that's starting to pop out a bit more. Let's come down and have a closer look. Right under the belt buckle. Side of the belt buckle. Size of these pouches. You want to get fed up watching this, aren't you? Now this might seem like a pain in the watsies. <laughs> but I derive a lot of pleasure from this sort of thing. You get into a zone. Right, here's our figure lined, and the next step is to get some uh, colour onto it. What I'm going to be doing is, first of all, blocking in the main areas of the English uniform. The paint I'm going to be using is Vallejo's English uniform, <laughs> believe it or not. I've also got a bit of ivory white there, just to tone it down a bit as well. On the palette then, I've got two pores of the English uniform paint, which I'm now going to thin down. I thin down with distilled water with uh, a little bit of uh, flow improver. It's, it's at a rate of about 30 water to one flow improver. It's not much, maybe 20 to one. I'm using twice as much water to start as paint. There's my two pores, that one's a bit smaller. With a, not one of my best brushes, a mixing brush. Start to mix that in. That still feels a bit thick. Right, so we really want a watery consistency, even a bit more. And the same with this pool here. I'll add a bit more water to start because it won't be enough. See how thin it is? It just soaks. Looks so right in. That's still a tiny bit too stony, so a bit more water. That's better. And for this top one, I'm going to lighten it a bit with the ivory. Just, just a little bit, a bit too, too much perhaps. The difference isn't going to be stark, but it's just, it's just so there's a bit of variation on the uniform. You don't want everything in the same colour. So put that next to that, and you can see it's just a tiny bit lighter. Now with the two tones, I mean you start with a darker one, paint on the brush, we most of it off so it's, it's... You see how thin that is? What happens is that the pigments show better on the lighter areas of the primary and remain dark on the darker areas. Now you might think that that's not colouring it in but it is. So that was the first effort for the trousers. Wash the brush out. Now with a lighter mix I'll do the jacket. Working with just the tip of the brush, there's too much paint on there. Doesn't really matter if it goes on some of the other details, but it's best to work if possible as neat as possible because it makes the job a lot easier. I like that so far. Between the rifle and the sleeves. If you hear a juddering noise, 
da, 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 da. it's my camera, which is a stills camera with a video attachment. It's not, the, the quality's alright, but it's not really equipped for video. I may well have to treat myself one day to a proper video camera. And then you're for it, you're going to be jabbering on all the time. This is a size 2 brush. This is a sable brush made by Jackson's, the art company in London. They're a good retailers and they make good own brand items which have come out a bit cheaper than the mainstream brands. It's still very good. Right, that's the first coat on. And here is just move that away a bit. Here is in a it's about as close as I get with this camera. I hope that focuses alright. And you can see just with that very one single thin wash that the colour is taken onto the the primer coat and that the two different colours, the darker at the bottom and the lighter at the top shows. Now the the reason for the, the lighter and the darker is is that you know the trousers and jacket might have been made at a different time, different colour, might be a different age cloth or whatever. And it just when you've got a single almost a monotone figure, you need to start emphasising differences. And just a slight difference in colour makes makes a bit of visual interest. Right, that's a single coat of a very thin paint. I'm going to now do the a second coat uh, and we'll come back and have a look. Okay, back to the normal view. Sorry for the second coat, make sure the brush is clean and then there's no drips of water on the ferrule. The paint on my white palette, is, because it's so thin, is separating out, so just give that a, a mix. And I've got the darker one there. Tip of the brush in, wick off all the excess. excess. In with the eyes. We really are quite small, these things. It's important to let each, especially with these thin coats, to let each layer dry fully before moving on. Otherwise, you, with the thin paint, it, it flattens down to a very flat finish, which is good. With no brush marks here whatsoever, which is what you want to maintain. And now we go with the lighter one. Mixing brush. Now the jacket colours. Turn this round now, hopefully the camera will pick up focus again so I can see it better. I'm already liking what I see. These really are fabulous little figures by WD Models. I sound like I'm an advert, don't I? But they are. They're superb, absolutely superb cast and carvings. You just have to wonder about the skill of the person that made the masters for these. Here, I'm just going to stick some of the darker paint in his neck there so when the head goes on there's no glinty metal. Okay, while we've got those two paints on the palette, what I'm going to do is take some of the lighter colour, just put it there, and then a bit more of the white. A bit too light. A bit darker, and it just that's better. So again, it goes one step lighter. 
I'm going to do his putties. Do these a different colour to the than to the webbing, which is going to be a very light colour. A bit lighter actually. Working with these thin washes means that it's very easy to mend any overflow. That might be a bit too light, we'll have a look when it dries. Oh no, that's okay. So in a very short amount of time we're making something that looks really quite nice. Is the camera focusing in? Uh, we'll, we'll see when I monitor it. Um, on the first stage then we did that black lining which and then we painted up to the various bits of detail and those black lines now have got a bit of paint on them so they're not quite so stark as they were but they, they do make the definition between the two shades, the, the khaki of the of the, the English uniform green, greeny brown there, and when they the webbing is painted, which will be a sort of a, a sandy khaki, it really will be a nice contrast. Okay, that's that stage done. So there's our guy with the two coats of the uniform colour, and the putties are done as well. Next up we're going to do the webbing, which is, um, it needs to be a, a lighter contrast colour. Um, and I'm going to be using the main colour, khaki, which is a slightly more greener variation of the, the brown we put on. And I'm going to lighten that down with uh, a rocky sand. You can see two blobs of paint on the palette already. First up I'm going to thin down the rocky sand. So there's one drop. Two drops, three, perhaps four. And again, that's just water with a very small amount of flow improver in it. Not sure the flow improver is necessary, but it seems to work for me. It actually acts as a very slight retarding agent as well. Let's put that on our tissue. Can you see that? Yep. So very, very thin. A bit too light at the moment though, so we're going to darken up with this khaki colour. A bit at a time until we're satisfied. Nope. Getting there. Put that on there. See, so it's just that tiny bit darken out and it's still contrasting with our uniform colour, which is what we want to. We want it to show up. I'll just darken it just a touch more and then we'll come back let's put that to one side a bit darker let's put that puddle there turn it darker and we'll lighten the very top of bits later on too right, that's ready to go I think excuse the noise, that's the brush being cleaned out in with my Raphael number one this time and the idea is, let's, it's very difficult to do this so you can see it with my camera. Paint on, fill the, you know, the belly of the brush up, get rid of the excess. And then, straps first because they're easy. Pouches. Using the very tip of the brush there. Because we've done the black, it doesn't really matter if we don't go out to the edge because the black takes care of that. But 
I'm not sure I'd be able to do all of this on camera because I can't actually <laughs> can't actually get in to see everything. But there we go. I mean that, that's not too bad. That's that strap. Now there's a different strap which is his rifle. I'll, I'll paint that the same colour at the start. But we'll make sure they're differentiated. And that comes down here too. Another pouch there. And there's his trenching tool, which will be a different colour of gear. No, not his trenching tool, his bayonet case. Okay, turn the chappy over. And there's his knapsack on his back. I hope. Wash it off first. Into the paint. It's all lovely strap work that they managed to get into this. It's amazing. I'm whispering, I don't know why I'm whispering. It's because I'm concentrating. the bits that you can see too. There's the water bottle. There's some very fine straps on that which I'm going to pick out in a minute. But first I'll just get the car off. And the trenching tool at the back. That'll be a darker colour but we'll put this on just as a base. Oh, I think that's looking good. Okay, so we've got that first coat of the webbing colour on. It's looking quite nice already, I think. Let's just twiddle it around a bit so I might see a bit of contrast. Turn it round. Oh, this wretched camera losing its focus. Again, that's beginning to stand out now. It's time to lighten it a bit. I'm going to turn the camera off, get some paints out, and then I'll come back. I thought I'd just been filming, but I don't know if I have or not. Tap, tap, tap in the background is our tits, which are still beavering away, making the nest and restructuring their home. This is the, the uh, mixture of um, khaki and, and Iraqi sand. I've added ivory white to it, to, or ivory, to lighten it down still further. I'm going to put a tiny bit more on. And that's very, very thin. Maybe even a bit more water on. And at the very highest points of these straps, tops of the pouches. That one's in shadow, we'll just tip the edge of it. The strap here. The idea of this is just to add a bit of false contrast, really. So it really does appear that the light's coming down from the top. Something this small, we've got to trick the eye. Turn it round. With this lovely light colour. Do the tops of these packs. Not the straps, though, because we want those to be different on that pack. Buckles, the buckles, I'm see. These curled buckles at 176 go. Tops of the bottle. So the body parts at the side, so they show up. And the trenching tool. There's this bayonet thing. That needs just down this side here. Okay, there it is with the Strap some webbing picked out. Turn it around slowly so this magic camera doesn't. 
doesn't lose it. Let's hold. And the tops of the pack, which are now shining out. I might blend those in a bit more, actually. They look a bit stuck. But anyway, contrast is your friend. <laughs> Give me the scatter thing. I mean, let's put my fingertip next to it. I mean, I've got little fingers too. I mean, it really is tiny. But on that backpack, the chap who's made the masters has managed to get the folds of the of the navis, of the hat, knapsack or whatever it is on his back. Little buckles, different straps, it's just extraordinary really. Right, you don't want to look at that forever. Right, we're making good progress on this. Right, next up it's going to be the chaps rifle I think. There's a nice little detail on that so we're going to see if we can pick that out. I don't like to use metallic acrylic um, metallics on figures. I, I think they're a tiny bit too crude especially at this this scale so what I'm going to do is for the gunmetal basic gunmetal colour I'm going to use first of all this might seem a bit oh this isn't that needs mixing up a bit more You can hear my nuts rattling in my paint bottle. Grey blue, which is a Vallejo colour. And neutral grey. Neutral grey is a very useful paint to have. I use it a lot with Tamiya paints just to change the hue of the colours for small scale things. Okay, so our basic gun metal is going to be a neutral grey with just the merest bit of blue on it. And of course, that needs thinning down. Not quite so much this time. This is where it gets tricky. On the brush, make sure the brush is practically dry. Wick it off onto the paper. And this is the top half of the gun. It's metal. Not very well wicking the paint off, but gotta leave some. It's so already sharp when I do the wood colour. Bold confidence stroke. Top of the barrel, which is easy. And under here, which is the trigger and magazine. Absolutely extraordinary. I know I've said this, but I'll say it again. Detail on these things is. Not even the, the 
bolt. The bolt action. Fantastic. Next up, I'm going to paint the stock of that gun. Uh, the barrel's looking okay with its blue grey. And what I'm going to be using is this colour here. Lots of browns on this planet, goodness. Is um, Vallejo Panzer Aces old wood, which is a very nice basic wood colour. It never, it's never left on its own though. It always needs a bit of um, finishing off, which I'll be doing on camera a bit later. Okay, thin it down as usual. Clean the brush because I've still got granite, which is very lazy. Okay, in dab down to the stock. The beauty of working with thin paint is that it covers so well in terms of flat finish. It does mean that you have to apply several coats though, but I don't see that as a problem. Especially if this back of his arm is a touch of wood paint because it's not too dissimilar to the uniform anyway. Paint the butt, we're going to paint that a brassy colour. But... It's covering nicely. Trying to avoid the Bits I've done on the barrel. I have to do that off camera because I can't. I can't get to the. I can't get the brush to the point on the other side. Done. Now it's time to start making that barrel pop a bit more. See the contrast between the wood and the gun metal. The gun metal is good actually. But we're going to just highlight that a bit. First of all, on the palette here, I've got a bit of light grey. Light grey, which is this puddle here. I'll take that away. Now I've got my blue grey in there, and I'm going to take a bit of the light grey just here. Don't need much. Thin that down a bit. Whoops. Messy work. Wick off the paint off the brush so there's just a bit. And then I'm going to work just upwards very lightly and downwards here. Same over here. This is just an intermediary step. And on the top here. Now you might not think that's done much. It ain't. <laughs> but in a minute, that's all going to come together. Just pick up the bottom of the trigger guard with that. Let that dry again. There's a new puddle of paint on my palette, which is this one here, which is the mix here of the gunmetal colour mixed with the light grey. And to that, I've added the old famous ivory now with the tip of the brush in it. So there's only the faintest bit of paint on there. I'm going to just gently go up to the sides of that, top of that, top of the bayonet mount there. working upwards because the paint deposits more upwards. Same on this side. But you're glad you started watching this, aren't you? Well, 
those details. So this is the light glinting up on bare metal. As it does down here on the trigger guard, and here because I've added some of that lovely gunmetal colour to his the hasp of his bayonet case. And we're going to go just one step further. Your ivory. You've got to be very careful there, otherwise, you ruin the delicacy of it just, just at the top. Come in with a bit of black in a minute. Just pick out where the bands are. See the band? It's like that. And we'll put a bit of black either side of that. That looks more like it. Got a nice bit of contrast now between. Right, I hope the camera is picking up what I've just done there with the the various shades of grey on that gun. And, and although it's not as bright and shiny as it would be if you used metal paint, I think at this scale it looks a little bit more realistic. Okay, now we're going to have a look at um, two figures at once. How exciting. What we've got here is our trooper on the right, and on the left is one of the gun crew. Now, on across his chest is a bandolier which is made of leather and I've painted it mahogany brown now the mahogany brown leather and the brown wood stock of his gun I'm going to paint with Vallejo's equivalent of pixie dust which is smoke which is a very strange mix I don't know if it's paint or ink or whatever and uh, it's, uh, it's a strange stuff because you can shake it up and there's little tiny black bits in it, and you think, well, what's that all that about? But once you spread it on, it has a fantastic weathering effect for wood and leather. And I'm going to show you on those two figures now. So there's our wet pan. Here's the smoke, which comes out quite thick. Needs thinning down like everything else. So, one to one with water in this case. Well, water with the fly improver in it, and with our mixing brush, put it in together. And if I spread it out, you can see it's slightly granular in there. And you think, oh, I've got a dodgy bottle. But in fact, it's all part of its genius. Right, so I thin that down a bit more. And then start with our our trooper chappy, make sure that you can see him hopefully the camera's in focus, paint in fill the brush up, wick off and onto the wood the more coats you give it the darker that's going to get so it's probably only going to be one one proper coat here on the wood I'll do the other side of that rifle off camera because 
I'll get to it. And it, it pulls and it gets darker in the excess of wash. It's it's really quite remarkable stuff. Right, that's that, and let's do this chap's leather. So that was painted first of all with again Vallejo mahogany brown. It's a nice rich red leather. Perfect for ammunition pouches. This leather strap comes across the back. I'm going to have to zoom in myself so I'm going to get close to the job to get that strap coated. It has a little bit of gloss and makes the leather look a bit warm. Pouches, the tops, bottoms. Move that side, come back to our gun, which is already showing nice effects. So that's Tammy Smoke, I'm a big fan. Not Tammy a smoke, what am I talking about? Vallejo smoke. But Tammy does smoke, which is uh she's also very good, but but Vallejo is my favourite. Okay, closing straight now, you're uh, finishing straight, I'm sure you'd be happy to know. Um now we've got the main colours on, it's a case of a bit of touching up and um, final final blocking in. I still got to do his shoes, his hands, but what I'm going to do now is just pick up a bit of colour on, on the uniform on um, buttons and buckles. So we've got on the wet palette there a pool of orange brown, it's uh, again a, let's see this in camera. That's uh, a Vallejo colour again, orange brown. And that's going to be the basis for the brass. Might not look brass like, but it's just an underlying colour for what's going to follow. So let's get some of my thinner on it. Get it nice and thin. Put that there, and so you can see what sort of colour it is. Orange brown. <laughs> what it says on the label. So let's 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 think about what's going to be brass. I'm not sure that everything was brass actually, but let's have a look. It's good good for a bit of colour. I'm just going to touch it to the to the buttons there. And actually, I've gone a bit too far with my water. So let's just put a little bit more paint on there. My good brush, mix it in, which is something I hate doing, but I'm just a bit lazy too. Right. Make sure there's a nice fine point on the brush. That's better. The idea isn't to have it shining orangey brown, but it's just to provide a start of background colour. Again, I could use I know, a Games Workshop or Vallejo dark metallic, but I think they're just a bit too stark for something this small. And this is actually very nice. I don't know if you can pick that up on the camera, but with my I've got an OptiVisor on my head, and I'm liking what I'm seeing for it. I'm going to put some of the, put a bit of brass on these pouches again. I'm not sure whether they're in brass or not. And the very buttons there, there, and there. Strap buckles. Gun. 
here. Oops, too much. Let's quickly like that, okay. On the brass plate of the gun. This is gonna make my make the gun the camera go out of focus. I remember as a kid in the late sixties when I was a teenager, thirteen or fourteen. I was in the army cadets and our parade guns are actually Martini Henry's from the very turn of the century, the Boer War and the Zulu War and everything, single shot things and then we got Lee Enfield and I always remember how shiny the base plate was and there was a flap you lifted up to get the cleaning materials out, it's fantastic and I could strip that gun, get it clean wasn't too good a shot though. <laughs> anyway, enough of that nonsense. Right, turning him over. And again, what we're going to do is just see if we can pick out just the tips of those. Buckles there. Similarly on the entrenching tool. So just using the very tip of this number one brush. I firm believe that, that even for the finest of detail, a large body brush like a number one is all you need, not rather than a sort of three zero which carries no paint and the paint dries up as soon as it's on it. Now I'm gonna although I know this isn't Historic I'm going to put a bit of colour on the top of his water bottle. I think that would have been a dark colour. Whoops, is that, is that something I put on his... No, oh, well, I'll deal with that off camera. It's a bit of a bit of wear on his fabric. Now to take that, that colour just one step further, I'm going to tip the bits I've just painted with the orange brown with Vallejo yellow. And that's just to give it a glint. So, tip into the yellow and then just on the top edge of the buckle there, bottom edge, the top edge there. Of those buttons, I've got enough paint on my brush. Now you might think, what's the point when it's just so small? But I don't think it's small things like this. Really bring your models to life. And because your eye is expecting brass, because of the glint, already the, the mind accepts that it is, even though it's just a bit of orange brown and a bit of yellow. When that dries, I shall look at it and I shall decide whether another touch is necessary. Okay, there's a buckle there which I'll just tip. Turn the thing over into the yellow and here. Jeez. 
I swivel it round, you might just get a glimpse of where that yellow paint has been. Yes, I'm there. <laughs> okay, that's the brass done. Let's uh, now do the boots. This is a very simple step. Um, the boots, of course, have got the black and white um, primer on. And they look actually quite good as they are quite dusty. Now, what we're going to do is just colour them up a bit. And I'm going to be using the Leho model colour German cam camouflage black brown. I, this is a strange old paint to work with because I, I find it very difficult to to mix and it doesn't it doesn't brush I think it might be a, the, the fact that I've had this bottle years and I don't find it brushes particularly well but it's a lovely colour one day I'll trick myself to a new bottle perhaps and there it is that's all very messy isn't it but I'm only going to be using a a dab of it, so that's fine for me. Okay, on camera, paint away, no distractions. And with my trusty brush, in and wick, and then just wipe over these shoes. Far too much paint on that. Better. because it's so thin and that dries the variations in the colour from the primer will still show through and there'll be a nice sort of brownie tinge to the boot simple as Drop down. Next stage is just to touch up that flesh there because their the, the two hands haven't had any paint. Now, my favourite, very favourite, bestest base flesh tone is, is Citadel Foundation Talon Flesh, which of course they don't make anymore. Which, you know, why would they make something that's good? And, and this, this pot is nearly empty and um, I'm I'm sure I can find it somewhere. I'm sure eBay will, will turn up a pot. I don't know, but it's 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 got a very good covering rate, right? and it's a very nice, very neutral flesh, and you can do whatever you like with it once it's once it's on. It's, you know, make it lighter, darker with lots of other paint. So there it is on the palette. It's a very pigment-heavy paint, so I'm going to make it nice and thin as usual. Putting water on this. Done. Nice clean brush. Tip it in. Make sure the paint soaks into it. Wick it off so there's just a bit left. And then build up the layers on the hands. Two or three layers. Fewer layers were the lightest. Oh, it's lightest, which is the very top there. And here. Sometimes you think, is there any colour there at all? And you go back to it. And of course there is. It's a remarkable thing about acrylics. The covering is extraordinary, really. It can be complicated to use if they're too thick. But brushed on nice and thin, it's fine. I like airbrushing them too. Okay, this that's going to be have two or three layers. A little dry between each one. You don't know what's that. Well, I think that's about as far as we're going to go with this figure today. I, I, 
I don't think that's turned out too bad. And I, I hope that the steps I've described A made sense. And B that you could see them. Now I participate on the International Scar Model Forum and there's also the comments boxes on YouTube. If you've got any questions about what I've done and any suggestions of how I might improve, I'd be very grateful. I'm a, I don't know if I've said this before, but I like WD models figures. <laughs> and there he is, done. I'm going to be using the exact same process to paint all the other figures for this model. It's a simple process, no tricks, no tricky methodologies. It relies on a good model, sound priming, thin paint, a sharp brush and a steady hand. Together with, perhaps, a little bit of practice and in my case, an optimizer. Here's our man displayed on the internationally recognised measure of scale models, a Tamiya paint pot. Well, I hope that you found that useful. I've certainly had a lot of fun pulling it together. In the next couple of episodes of Mr Bob's Builds, all components will at last be completed and I'll be turning my attention to the basement. Until then, I'll leave you with a couple of photographs of the finished figure. And, at the end, the photograph that Tommy Atkins has had done for his dear old mum and for the girl that he's leaving behind. Bye for now. Thank you for watching and I hope that you'll come back soon.